Hey guys, my name is Uma and welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to be working on a really exciting project. We're going to be building a web application, or as most of you know this as, a website that transfers a music playlist from Spotify to Apple Music. Without further delay, let's get started. Before we jump into the code, let's take a quick look at what we will be building. On the left here, I have my Spotify account and I have some playlists here. On the right, I have my Apple Music account and as you can see, there is no playlist here. Our application starts with the home page. When you click transfer to Apple Music, you then have to log into your Spotify account. After logging into Spotify, it fetches all of your Spotify playlist and displays it to you. You can then pick the playlist you want to transfer to Apple Music and click transfer to Apple Music. You then have to log into your Apple Music account. And just like that, it has transferred our selected playlist to our Apple Music account. It also shows you the songs in the playlist that couldn't be added for some reason or another, but we'll talk about that in a later video. This is a fairly big project and so I have divided the project into smaller videos so I can go into more detail as we go through the major parts of the project. The episodes are listed here and down in the description right below the like button. For this episode, we'll be going over the high level design. We will also create a developer account for both platforms, more on that in a bit. For now, let's get started on the high level design. So we want to transfer some or all of our music playlists from Spotify to Apple Music. Doing this manually, we would first open Spotify. We would then navigate to the playlist that we want to transfer to Apple Music. Say we want to transfer our rap playlist. We would then go to Apple Music, create a similar playlist, then search for each of the songs we want to transfer. After we find the song, we then manually transfer it to the playlist. We would have to do this for each of the songs in all of our playlists. That'll take a really long time. Luckily for us, we can do everything I just showed using APIs. If you know what an API is, feel free to skip to this timestamp. If you don't, let's talk about APIs for a little bit. An API is basically an acronym for Application Programming Interface. It is basically a set of rules that allow applications to talk to each other and share data. Say I have an application and my application wants to know the location of a park or a restaurant. Off the top of my head, I know Google has that information in a database somewhere, Google Maps. Now, I know I'll probably never get access to that Google database. What I can do is I can try to get access to the Google Maps API or the Google API. I can then make calls to the API with specific parameters. The API does its magic and returns the data that meets my search parameters. The API has a direct set of rules that I have to use to interact with the data. For example, it probably won't let me delete any data from the database. I can only search for data using specific search parameters like the location, the city that the park is in, and more. A lot of big companies have APIs that you can use to interact with your data. Apple, Google, Facebook, Yelp, Twitter, and more. Even the FBI has an API you can use to find information regarding the most wanted criminals, and they all have documentation. Now, luckily for us, both Spotify and Apple Music have APIs we can use. Our application will use the Spotify API to fetch all of the playlists from our Spotify account. We will then use the Apple Music API to search for the songs in the playlist, and after finding them, we will create a similar playlist with the same name in our Apple Music account, then populate those playlists with the songs that we found. We will do this for each of the playlists that we want to transfer. Let's get started with the Spotify API. To use the Spotify API, we first need to create a Spotify developer account. This is typical with using any API. Open a browser and navigate to developer.spotify.com. Here you'll find a bunch of resources regarding using the Spotify API. To create a developer account, navigate to dashboard on the top right corner. Now, if you have a Spotify account, you can log in using your Spotify account, but if you don't, you can create a new account. After signing in, you'll be navigated to the page where you can see all the previous apps you've created, and you can also create a new app. Click on Create an App 
on the top right corner. Give your app a name and a description. After creating the app, you'll be directed to this page where you have access to the client ID and when you click show secret, you will also have access to the client secret. Copy these two values, we'll need them in a later step. Next, click on edit settings. Scroll down to redirect URIs and add the following redirect URI. HTTP forward slash forward slash localhost colon forward slash callback. This will be the URL that Spotify will use for the callback when it is sending us information regarding authentication. We'll talk about that in the next video. Scroll down and click save. And that's it, we're done with the Spotify developer account. After authentication, we should have access to the Spotify API, hence giving us access to Spotify data. Let's get started on the Apple Music side of things. The Apple developer account is a bit more tricky and expensive. To use the Apple Music API, like anything Apple, it'll cost you. You will need a developer account that costs $99 per year. Yeah, that's Apple for you. On the bright side, after getting access to the Apple developer account, you will have access to all sorts of Apple services, including deploying apps to the App Store. I'll be making videos on that, so stay tuned. If you decide to get the Apple developer account, after signing up, you'll be redirected to the Apple Developer Dashboard, which you can find at developer.apple.com. On the top right corner, click on Account. You will then have to sign in. After signing in, you will be redirected to the Dashboard. Click on Certificates, ID, and Profiles on the left panel. Next, click on Identifiers. Create a new identifier by clicking the plus sign beside Identifiers. Scroll down to Music ID, which is the second to the last option. Click Continue. Give your music ID a description and an identifier. Click Continue. Finally, click Register. Next, navigate to Keys on the same menu. Click on Create a new key. Give your key a name. Scroll down and click on Music Kit, then click Configure. Select the ID you just created and click Save. Next, click Continue. Click Register. You then have access to the key. I would suggest you download the key because after leaving this page, you won't have access to the key. We will use this key in our authentication step. Next, click Done. And that's all we have to do for the Apple Developer account. This brings us to the end of this video. In the next video, we will be going over how authentication works for Apple Music and Spotify. We will also be building our authentication server, so stay tuned and subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you next time.